Today, we're looking at a hidden gem of a silver documentary. This one's from 2010, and it's a beauty. Next, on Bullion Breakdown. back to the bullion breakdown hi everybody we are looking at a fun documentary that i found recently on youtube here it was from a small channel that only ever released one video and it was this um and the the channel was 73 brian's um, so i'll leave a description in the uh or a title uh, a link in the description but this uh video was produced in 2010 so it's dated but i love it because i love to go back and look at what was going on at a specific time in bullion history and see what the what they were saying what the general gist of of the moment was and this is clearly an amateur documentary about silver uh, and i think uh it's a great documentary i don't know if this was the producer of the documentary or if, uh, if this channel just distributed it but i think it's amazing uh whoever produced it was great now the challenge with this documentary is it's pure silver pumper type style. You've got all the tropes uh, that one could have in a particular video, um, you know, the issues with supply and issues with demand. Um, what else do you have going on? Like you had price manipulation, the rise of China in 2010 and how they were impacting the market, all the industrial uses that it's, it's meant for, uh, you know, the massive, price predictions of the day, silver is going to rise to X dollars. You see all that in this documentary uh, and definitely with an overwhelming tone of FOMO. So everything you need in a contained, nice little uh, pumper package you can get in this 2010 silver documentary. So I'm going to just uh, show you here and I'll check you on the other side here. Silver, the most undervalued metal in human history. Gold today is without a doubt more rare than silver. But what about tomorrow? On average today, for every 10 ounces of silver pulled out of the ground, only one ounce of gold is mined. However, the majority of silver mined is used for consumption, while the majority of gold mined is nearly all added to global inventory. Yet precious metal investors, as small of a group as they are, are still investing $7 in GLD for every $1 they invest in SLB. Looking at modern history, silver is destined to be more rare and certainly worth more than gold. In 1950, there were 10 billion ounces of above ground available silver. By 1980, it shrank to 3.5 billion ounces. And in 2010, it is estimated that above ground available silver supply is between 500 to 700 million ounces. To put this into perspective, total above ground available gold in 1950 was 1 billion ounces. And today, it's estimated to be around 7 billion ounces. In 1980, when silver nearly reached $50 per ounce, global population was 2.5 billion people. Global GDP was $10 trillion, and China had the 11th largest economy. Today, global population is near 7 billion people. Global GDP, $60 trillion, and China is now the second largest economy. So the relation since 1980 is up 176%. Global GDP is up 500%. Above ground available gold is up 600%. Meanwhile, above ground available silver has plummeted at least by 91%. And the price is still down 46% from its 1980 high of $50 per ounce. To say the opportunity in silver is enormous is an understatement. Looking at the historical silver to gold ratio of 15 to one, silver is highly undervalued today. It now takes 50 ounces of silver to purchase one ounce of gold. Even when ignoring the above ground supply deviation, mined metal production should at the very least bring that number to 10 to one. 
using today's prices with gold at 1400 silver should be worth no less than $140 per ounce. Silver is being consumed more than ever, and it is a fact that there is less above ground available silver than there is gold. Industrial demand for silver is up 18% in just the last year. The need for silver is growing by the day. Silver is being consumed and used for bandages for wound care, batteries, brazing, soldering, Cadillac converters, cell phones, computers, satellites, high-tech weaponry, lasers, digital technology, clothing, electronic circuit boards, ink, solar cells, water purification, wood treatment, antennas, RFID chips, freeway toll transponders, passports, and the list goes on. From 1990 to 2000, nearly 2 billion ounces of above ground available silver disappeared to consumption. Industrial demand for silver was only 35% by the year 2000. Today, it's 54%. And looking at the new uses for silver, the silver production deficit will only widen. China, since 2003, has been growing its solar energy base by almost 100% every year. By 2014, the world will need 130 million ounces of silver just to satisfy one year of global solar demand. The world has consumed so much silver in the last 50 years that the last time above ground available inventory was this low was 1300 AD. The deficit of silver production has been met mostly from government stockpiles. The U.S. has dumped nearly 5 billion ounces since World War II into the silver markets. But as of 2010, according to the USGS, the government stockpile for silver are listed as none. The supply and demand deficit continues to be ignored by global investors year after year, decade after decade. Total mining production for 2009 was 710 million ounces. Total demand was 889 million ounces. That's a mining production deficit of 179 million ounces to meet demand. With each day comes a new use for silver and the supply and demand deficit continues to eat away at the above ground available supply. FutureMoneyTrends.com is projecting that just as palladium was once worth more than platinum, silver will one day be worth more than gold. The demand for silver will continue to increase, yet mining production will never be able to keep up. Depleting the above ground available silver supply possibly by the end of this decade, silver may be the greatest investment in human history. How often does not any generation get the opportunity to invest in a finite resource that will soon be extinct? Kaboom. <laughs> that, that is the way to end a video. Silver is going to go extinct. Uh, listen, I, I hope you enjoyed that, that documentary, amateur documentary from 2010. What a fascinating uh, video. They covered a lot of you know, knowledgeable topics, things that you need to know. They were right about the rise of China and sort of what was happening during 2010 era and what China was doing to sort of grow their their stance in, in the world. Um, they, they talked about, you know, the history of supply um, and what's going on above ground, below ground, all these things that are going on with, with what you hear about today in the silver market. It was going on then just like it was going on now. So if you're a new stacker, take heed to that message. And if you're an experienced stacker, I hope you enjoy sort of a, a trip down memory lane on what it what it was like back then. And oddly enough, as we watch a lot of videos and I see a lot of content creators commenting on, on the FOMO type uh, issues of today, it's the same type of tone, you know, 13 years ago. Um, and it's just very interesting. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, time capsule of a documentary on silver bullion. Uh, this has been Bullion Breakdown. Guys, watch more video and stick with me for the next one. Until then, stay awesome.